your man out of Japan, Jay Contra here, and I shipped most of my games back to America when I left Japan, but I hand-carried some of my most precious games, the games that I actually wanted to either hold on to that I couldn't risk getting lost in the mail, or the games that I actually wanted to play. So in this video, I'm going to show you at least the first part of what I brought back with me. So hope you enjoy. Welcome to the Desk Studio, everyone. Here we're going to start out with a, a box full of portable games. Here we've got Pokemon Gold. Now, this is actually not very expensive in Japan, and I suppose I should start just by opening this. The real trick with buying Japanese Pokemon games is that very often Japanese sellers will not replace the batteries in the actual cartridge itself. So you might end up having to do that on yourself. Oh man, oh, if only I could go back and get some of these Japanese cards. Japanese cards, they're not as expensive as the American versions. The English Pokemon cards, as of the filming of this video, are absolutely out of control in terms of their costs. And oh, they actually, I don't think they did this in America, right? So this is just explaining how you're supposed to properly clean your cartridge. I'm guessing this is the, the official game cleaner here. <laughs> or you could just use a Q-tip. Actually, the only thing really you should be using Q-tips for, you shouldn't be using those on your ear, apparently. To every doctor I've ever talked to, they always say using Q-tips in your ear is really dangerous. <laughs> oh, look. I will say that the I think the American manual for Pokemon is better than the Japanese or Gen 1. I'm actually not sure what the Gen 2 manuals look like. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Look at this beautiful art. I think Gen 2 is the best gen. Uh, by the way, I'm sure I might get lamb lambasted or lambasted for that in the comments, but my favorite gen is definitely Gen 2 in terms of the Pokemon. Let's take a look at the cartridge itself. It actually came with the cool, I love these Game Boy cases. Where did I even buy this? I'm pretty sure I bought this at like a hard off somewhere. Not bad, a little scratch there. What that, yeah, what's that impressing there for? Yep. I actually do think the issue with this with this particular cartridge is that the save battery doesn't work. So when I actually get around to properly playing this, I am going to need to replace the battery. I've got so many games that I need to replace the battery on. So let's put you away. Really love the inserts there. I don't think it had the... Uh... See, the thing is, so judging the completeness of a Japanese game is really difficult because Japanese stores will mostly focus on, does it have the manual, the cartridge, or the CD, and the box? But there's so many of these inserts here. Like, what's this insert? Um, yeah, so this is just about battery life. It says, um, the battery's only supposed to last for about two years after production. Obviously, some of these have lasted for, for decades, although I don't know if this one will have lasted. I don't think I've actually put this in to see if it actually works or not. But look at I, the crystal cartridge is also definitely one of the most beautiful cartridges for really any system. But oh, look, at, just look at that. Ah, oh, incredible. So let's put that away. I love the, the blue plastic bag for the blue cartridge. And then what do we get here? Yep, we get the, the cleaning insert, the Game Boy Color insert. This is going to have all your different accessories that they're trying to sell you. Well, 7,000 yen for a new Game Boy Color. I think complete in box Game Boy Colors in Japan are going for 7,000 yen now. Oh yeah, yes, yes. The beauty, oh, <laughs> oh my God. Connect your Game Boy Color to your mobile phone. January 27th, 2001. Oh, I'm bending it, I'm bending it, oh no. Oh, so glad, so glad I could see that. I like, you know, it's the, the thing about collecting actual physical games. Now that I think about it, is that when you're when you don't have access to them, when you're like me and you've you've shipped off ninety percent of your collection to America, or even say say you're living in the states and you've got it in like a storage shed, like what are you even gonna do with all this stuff? Like, like maybe I'm getting a, a little bit too existential here, but what are you supposed to do? with all of these games. Actually, let me, uh, we'll, we'll say a little preview of what's, of what's coming. I'm trying to uh, keep this orderly. But what are you supposed to do with your physical game collection? Uh, where did I get this? I think this is just from like, I think I just Google searched retro game cases and there's just some guy who I think he's paying for his kid's college by selling uh, acrylic 
cases for all these games. I actually need to buy a few more because as you can tell, this Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem game I need to uh, properly case. Because I do love the Fire Emblem series so freaking much. It's actually another game. It's a lot of these games are on my shame pile. I think, uh, let's see, I had not played any of those Game Boy games. I, I have not played Emerald yet. Now, Emerald, when you get into the Game Boy Advance uh, generation of games, you actually, I think most of the time, don't need to worry about the save battery. And I think you might, is that it there just behind the label? The, as far as I'm aware, the Game Boy Advance generation of Pokemon games does not need a save battery. The battery is just there for the clock. Yeah, look at that. The, like the wireless. Nintendo's hubris uh, creating wireless uh, connecting cables for these bad boys. Included with, uh, yeah, it wasn't with Ruby and Sapphire, but it was definitely with Emerald and Fire Red and Leaf Green. Gen 3 is also one of the, the bigger mysteries to me. Yeah, that's how you use the wireless adapter. What is this? Pokemon Daisuke Kuraba. Pokemon Club. Pokemon Information. <laughs> oh, wow. Club Nintendo. Well, if Club Nintendo was still around, you could be taking this. But it is long gone. What is this? What is this? Yep, wireless adapter. Info. What have we got here? Black and white. Uh, before playing guide. What is this here? Oh, there's a little map. That's cool. Yeah, the Gen 1 map. That's what I really want to see. This is how you can connect uh, Ruby and Sapphire. Oh, no, this is how you can actually trade with Ruby and Sapphire. That's I love all this little information. Look, look, look at all of this paper. You would, you'd never see that today. Maybe I'm just showing off how freaking old I am. But you don't see that today. And it's honestly, like, yeah, it's it's like you, you don't need this stuff today because most of the time people are just going to be Googling it. They're not going to have the attention span. Do you think it's attention span or is it a cost cutting measure? Or it's probably both. It's probably these game companies were figuring out that, I mean, mid 2000s, though, uh, our brains had not been baked by YouTube and Instagram quite at that point yet. I want to be careful. I don't want to bend these and it's really kind of tough you got to be really careful with these old cardboard cases it hasn't no it's not bowing don't worry about that yeah no we'll worry about that later put 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 emerald there yeah why not let's go to fire emblem what is this uh the what is this the sealed blade what did they call this the binding blade i think is what they called it in english see anything else in there nope just that art i love that sort of that early 2000s when did this come out oh yeah there's uh the, the gayo box yeah let's see it came out in 2002 march 29th so it's now uh past 18 years old that can now buy cigarettes or didn't they change the cigarette age i don't know i i, I don't smoke so i'm not aware but uh, it, this could be drafted uh if it was male if it registered as male it would need to register for the draft in america <laughs> that's how old this game is I hope we can zoom in there. Yeah, look at that. Oh, Roy. I think people... Uh, I, did Fire Emblem only come out in America because of Smash Brothers? Is, the, is that the case? I don't know if that's actually the case or not. Yep, yeah, there's more. There's more of Roy. This is Lilina. Yeah, great. I don't see anything else in there. Nope. I actually want to... Uh, when I bought... I bought Final Fantasy IV for the Game Boy Advance. And... I didn't. I wasn't aware of it at the time, but I, although I could hear some clicking around in the box that I had bought, I ended up unboxing it in the car uh, from the hard off after I bought it, and I found out that there was actually a Final Fantasy one and two for Game Boy Advance in the Final Fantasy four that I had just purchased. Here's a couple more shame games. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, that's like the Fire Sword or whatever. I think this ended up being what? Just just Fire Emblem. This was the, correct me if I'm wrong, and please someone do, but this was the first Fire Emblem game that was released in North America. I, and I think it's a whole new one. It's not like, there was the two Fire Emblems that came out for the 3DS. Or at least I think it was two, that they were just remakes of the original Fire Emblem games, or like remakes of the Super Nintendo games you a little plastic baggie love to have it again plastic baggie is not is not necessarily is not necessary to be considered a complete game Set the condition there another 34 didn't the didn't gold have 34 
like emblazoned on it. Let's see, and then let's take a look at the manual. See, so this would be considered a complete game. There's, a, I think, a lot of confusion. I get a lot of comments about people asking for completeness, especially in terms of cartridge games and CD games, but obviously, you know, just replace the cartridge with the CD. You have the box, you have the manual, and you have the game itself. And they will also tell you if it doesn't, if it does not have this, but generally this is not a part of the grading scheme. Although it might be included for the, for grading the box. I'm actually not sure about that. I'm not hundred percent on that. Fire Emblem. When did I get into Fire Emblem? I originally got into Fire Emblem because I really wanted to, um, everyone was talking about Fire Emblem Fates. I think that was my first Fire Emblem game. So I bought Fates. I absolutely loved it. And then I started just working my way backwards and buying all these Fire Emblem games. And then same story for Castlevania, um, sort of. I ended up buying the Famicom Mini. I, I actually have, this is actually the only English Castlevania game that I have is, um, what is this? It's not Aria of Sorrow. It is Harmony of Dissonance um, in the English. Let's see, what is this? It's like the, the um, Concerto of the White Knight is uh, what they call this Castlevania game. This is actually, um, I guess it's not as cheap as, or Circle of the Moon's a bit cheaper, but Aria of Sorrow, I think, really takes the cake for expensive uh, Game Boy Advance games. So I had this when I was a kid. Back in, I want to say, middle school, I picked it up because everyone was talking about how awesome it was. Uh, in the magazines. So, and of course, I was going to believe the magazines. Anything else in here? Oh, no. Oh, we got a little treat. What's in here? Oh, see, and then this is something that is not included in terms of completeness, but is very frequently asked for uh, by people who are trying to co collect complete Japanese games. This is the Hagaki, the postcard, which is something you would send in. It has a little survey. It's usually asking you um, like what you thought of the game, how you found out about the game. And if you sent it in, um, sometimes you might be entered a drawing for a free game. You might get some points for some kind of club. This is, I don't want to say this is supposed to be included with all Japanese games. I'm sure there are some games out there that did not originally ship with a postcard, but it is common to find this, but it is not included. Game stores in Japan will not tell you if this is included or not especially if you're buying online. If you're in the store itself, you can just, you can take this or whatever box it's being held in up to the counter and you can ask for it to be opened so you can look at the contents. But at least on the labels, on the stickers that they have on these games that sometimes they'll tell you if something is damaged inside the box or not, this, they will not tell you if this is included or not. So if you, if this is necessary for you to feel that it's a complete game, then you're gonna have to ask to see it. But online, as far as I know, Online retailers of Japanese games are like will just pretty much will not answer you. And they're pretty explicit about that. And they also will not do returns uh, for online purchases. So when I was a kid, I had this game. Well, I say when I was a kid, you know, when I was in my early teens, I had this. I played through it. I actually can't remember if I completed it or not. I definitely remember getting to the Upside Down Castle which I'm pretty sure this has. Please, cor again, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. It's been, it's been uh, what, 20 years since I've played this game now? And so I ended up buying, um, I ended up not really liking Castlevania after that. I had this really weird thing where I didn't like supernatural games. So what ended up happening was I was just really off of Castlevania. But then when I bought the Famicom Mini, I just thought that I, I played the original Castlevania just to say that I had I played it and I absolutely loved it. I was like, this is this is the action platformer that I need. I loved it, and then it just ended up costing me uh, more than a thousand dollars probably in buying up all the Castlevania games. Actually, no, probably a little bit under since the Japanese ones they're very expensive. It's one of the rare cases where a Japanese game is more expensive than the American version, considering that a cartridge copy of the original Castlevania in Japan now costs more than $100. Or well, if you can get a deal, uh, you can find it for around 90. I think that's what I bought it at. Uh, but a complete inbox copy, I remember seeing it for like $200 and thinking that was cheap. Whereas in North America, a complete inbox Castlevania can easily go for about, what, 120 bucks. 
significantly cheaper. And a lot of that is because of the Famicom disc system. Here we go, Mother 3, highly sought after. This is one of the first games that I bought when I went to Japan, but my Japanese wasn't so good when I actually bought it. Look at how many different ways there are to play Game Boy Advance games. You've got the console, if you want to play it on the TV, you can play it in the Game Boy Advance player. You've got the original Game Boy Advance, the SP, the Micro, which only plays Game Boy Advance games. You've got the original DS and the DS Lite. And so it is a bit shocking to me that considering you have all of these ways to play the Game Boy Advance, it is the Game Boy Advance SP that gets really expensive and it is the Game Boy Micro that has become absurdly expensive to the point where I would honestly just tell people it's like, it's not worth it. Yes, the backlight is good, but honestly, the the just the screen is so small. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just getting so old that I, I cannot recommend that because it's so hard to read. Now, what is in here? Let's see, Mother 3 Benri Manuaru. What is in here? Oh, it's a little, it's got tables. Oh, good. It, it tells you all the PP that you need to expend in order to use these particular moves. Uh, different, st the abnormal statuses. Wow. This is just on the cusp. We're right before smartphones hit. When did this come out? Let's check the copyright on this. I uh, can't tell. Oh, 2006. You know, all right, here's my mother's story and my almost brush with fame. I, I worked for this university um, a while ago and apparently um, Shige Sato Itoi, uh, the guy who directed the mother games, he apparently really liked the university and it, he ended up showing up one day and nobody told me and I was actually the guy who is in charge of taking pictures of guests when they arrive. I was part of like the, the university PR team. Nobody told me that Shigesato Itoi showed up. Someone else took his picture. And so I could have met this dude. I was so close. I was like maybe 20 yards away in a different office when he showed up. Yeah, well, that's just what I get. <laughs> It's so illustrative. Like they'd come, they'd come out and get me to take a picture of just some guy who donated a bunch of money to the university. But a celebrity actually shows up. Nobody tells me. I think I took a picture of some like football stars, or I mean, I mean soccer. Uh, for those Americans watching, some soccer players who showed up. They tell me when Itoi shows up. Nope. Anything else in here? Let's see. Oh, whoa! This is weird. Uh. Wait, this isn't... I have broken this, have I? That's so weird. Or did the cover come off? I wonder if the cover actually came off of this. Yeah? No? That's... This is so weird. This can't be right. Yeah? Just... You're... Page one? There's no back of this? Wow, I must have a defective copy. I didn't realize that. Man, all right, I gotta find another manual for this. This is um, what is this? Hold on, what is the what would the English for this be? Um, Kariishi, something in the the Stone of Light. I don't know. Did this get released in the U.S.? <laughs> I think all the Game Boy Advance games did get released in the U.S. I think. I actually um, here's the secret. If you're watching this, we're almost twenty minutes into the video. I have actually not played any of the Game Boy Advance Fire Emblems. <laughs> I bought them for like twenty bucks back in the day. And I just have not, I, this is my shame. You're Not only is this a big reason why I brought all of these with me to the UK when I moved out of Japan, is because I wanted to actually play all these. Unfortunately, despite um, not having a proper job, um, I still have not even gotten around to these, which is why I think I want to take the next uh, couple years off of buying Japanese games, simply because I have so many games that I haven't even bothered playing yet. This is crazy. This was this was at a really weird time for Contra. Let's let's take a look at the year. This came out in 02, so it's 2002. The era of 2D really cool sprite-based Contra is long past. This is in a really weird era where Contra was getting 3D games released and it was trying to come off as I think more hardcore than I think it was supposed to. This is when like Neo Contra was coming out, um, Sheen Contra was coming out. And so you have this weird dichotomy where you have, when you look at the original Contras, I actually don't have the original Contras here with me, but when you look at the original Contras, they've got these beautiful bright colors and they're honestly a little bit goofy, sort of in like that RoboCop, um, like Running Man style of 80s action. 
But then it took a real turn for the worst in the 2000s. I really say in like the in the post 9/11 world, Contra really it tried to be really gritty, and it just doesn't make any sense. Contra only makes sense when it's like goofy and ridiculous and colorful, which I think is a real problem with the modern Contras. Like um, what was like the newest Contra, like Contra Hardcore. I think it tries to be too too dark for its own good. And this Contra right here is really just a a, um, a a Game Boy Advance remake of the of the Super Nintendo version. Let's see. Come on, come on, close up properly. We gotta believe. We gotta believe. There we go. Uh, nope, almost the lip. See, this is strange. This actually, this plastic feels a bit too hard. This is the thing you have to be also something you need to be careful. Like, careful. Like this is we're really getting into the minutia here about video game collecting. But Japanese cartridge games tended to come in these plastic baggies. Now, a lot of these plastic baggies have since been discarded by the original owners of the games. But what's happened is a lot of these stores in Japan have started putting the games in plastic bags that are not the original. So if, again, if that's something much like the Hagaki, if it's something you need to be cons to consider it a complete game, that is also something that you'll want to watch out for. Let's see. Let's continue the portable games here. Here we go. Fire Red. Look at, look at how sparkly that is. Yeah. Look at that. It's like the holographic card of your dreams. It's the holographic Charizard that everyone wants. See, no little baggy here, but that's because it was... A discarded. And no, also no baggy for the... Uh, let's see. Wow, so many inserts. Game Boy Advance games, especially the Pokemon games, real golden era for inserts. When you think about it, this is like... Let's see. What year did this come out? This would have come out 2004. So just 2004, we're about to hit the, uh, the era of the PS3 and the Xbox 360. This is like peak cons peak game insert. With all of these instruction guides telling you about the different things. And then we have the marketing. This is the poster for the uh, the third generation movie. Let's see. Uh, the Bansu generation. Yeah. There we go. Which With, that, with whatever uh, game. With whatever movie this is supposed to be featuring Rayquaza there. And look at this. Just this fat manual. Not a lot of. Yeah. I wish there was a bit more art in here. Especially that original like Ken Sugimori art. Yeah, then we got Gary Oak. We've got Professor Oak. What is he, Orchid? Yeah, Okido Hakase. And then look at oh, just this beautiful red cartridge. Does it sparkle? No, no sparkling on that. I think the, does the plastic sparkle? No, not at all. I wish the plastic sparkled on this. And then here we go again, the Game Boy, Game Boy Advance link cable. Is that, does the link cable, does the wireless link cable only work for Pokemon or does it work for all of the Game Boy Advance uh, games that are capable of linking? I, I've never actually looked that up. It's not something I've ever uh, necessarily needed. <laughs> okay, put that to the side. What else do we have? Here we go. This is Steel Empire. This is actually a port of a very expensive Sega Genesis game. Steel Empire in Japan can... I. I want to say it's exclusive to Japan. Someone in the comments can maybe tell me if I'm wrong. This thing can go for like $150 or more. The Game Boy Advance version is significantly cheaper. I ended up buying, I remember, oh, I remember exactly where I bought this. Little 09 impress in there. I bought this at, oh, what was it called? It's like Omocha Soko. I want to say, I, no, it can, that can't be. It's this, it's, I can't remember the name of it, but it's this game reseller in Kyoto. Kyoto is really a strange place when you consider its its place in the annals of video game history simply because um, Kyoto is not really known as a place where you would go to buy retro video games despite the fact that it is the hometown not only of Nintendo but a few other uh, Japanese video game developers yet or is it like no it's not Otakara Soko Oh, Ojamakan, that's what it's called. If you're in the Kyoto area, I highly recommend checking out Ojamakan. There's a couple in Kyoto near train stations. There's also a few um, in the Osaka area. They've got really amazing prices 
on retro video games. That's actually where I ended up buying Pocky and Rocky for like half the cost of where you would find it elsewhere. Seiken Densetsu. This is the original. I remember buying this when I was a kid. I had Final Fantasy Adventure. And that really got me into the action RPG scene to the point where I would en end up uh, falling in love with the Kingdom Hearts uh, mainline series. I actually haven't played any of the Kingdom Hearts series aside from the console games, and I honestly don't see why you would. <laughs> oh no, see, yeah, that's. I wonder what's going to end up 10, 20 years from now with all these retro games, because if you look, the glue on, on all of these games is going to eventually going to start coming off. Like, that's just inevitable with all these games so i wonder like what retro game collecting is going to look like when all these games start just literally falling apart <laughs> just, oh that really takes me back this i was really it's really strange to me now having now entering my 30s and how i'm i'm not exactly anti-portable games but i've really been focusing on console games for the last decade but what i really i grew up playing Portable games because what would happen was I lived in the southwest of the United States for like five years, like four or five years. And what ended up happening was we would end up driving from the southwest of the United States out to the east coast. That's where my grandparents live. So I would literally be in a van for just days on a time, just waiting around until we got to the hotel, uh, you know, in middle America. And so I was playing. Game Boy games. That's really where I was playing the Final Fantasy Adventure, Final Fantasy Legends, the Pokemon games. Those are the games that I really grew up with. Maybe I was just too oversaturated with portable games by the time I ended up hitting my later teens and early 20s to the point where, no, I just didn't want to play another portable game because I wanted to play all those console games that I had missed out on, where maybe I would have more console games when I was a kid, if I had actually stayed in one place, but uh, that just wasn't the case. Oh, wow. Get her love. This is now the most expensive Japanese N64 game. And it makes sense that it would be advertised because that is a Hudson joint. Hudson now, I believe, owned by who owns Hudson now? Wow, I wonder if anybody's ever translated this. That's really cool. Like Game Boy Wars, you know, talk about portable games. Uh, the what was it? Um, Advance Wars, probably my favorite series for the Game Boy Advance. Really cool uh, simulation games. Not simu well in in Japanese they're called simulation games. In English we'd call them what real time strategy or no? I guess uh, game the Famicom Wars they would be uh, turn based strategy. But I was always into real real time strategy as well. So I think I've probably talked off your ear about all these games. I've got a couple of other boxes that I need to go through. Um, but I think I want to take a break before hitting those. Just some amazing portable games. I think I'll bring down the stack. Uh, I didn't mention that Steel Empire is, is a shooter. I did mention it was for the, um, the Genesis, though. We've got, let's see, a bunch of, like, I actually think, actually, as, since if you're watching this, we're almost 30 minutes in. Uh, you're probably uh, as hardcore into this as I am. But let's see, have not played, have not played, have not played. Did I did beat... Um, I did beat Pokemon Red. Haven't played. Haven't played. Oh my god, this is embarrassing. Haven't played. Played it for a little bit, but I played it when I just got to Japan and my Japanese wasn't good. So I um, uh, wasn't as able to get into Mother 3 as I perhaps should have. Uh, haven't played yet, but it's on the docket. Haven't played. Uh, do you see a theme running through this? Haven't played. Haven't played. Oh god, this is just getting embarrassing now. Haven't played. Haven't played. So there you go. That's my... Uh, it's not all of the portable games. Actually, no. Uh, I'll need to check the other box. Uh, but just a real, really fun collect. It was really fun to collect all of these in Japan. And it's going to take me months to get through these. But I'm really lo looking forward to actually having the time to do it. Uh, I'm going to continue on uh, after taking a little break with these videos. I have been your man out of Japan, Jay Contra. Please tell me if you have a huge shame pile of yourself a shame pile of your own in the comments below. Thanks for watching and mahalo.